Okay. Hi, everyone. It's me, Jess, from Fighting Spirit Film Festival, and I have a special guest for you today. Please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Charlotte Tashin. Thanks for having me. You describe to us yourself in three fictional characters. So a couple came to mind, and I think a lot of it has to do with just characters I want to portray. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how similar I'm actually to them. Um, I always think of um, of Natalie Portman's character in Black Swan. Mm -hmm. um, of course, Kill Bill needs to be in it too. Um, and then I actually was talking to my friend about it. Um, she's a really talented film filmmaker, and she said um, Nightcrawler from X Men. So I'll take it. She knows me better. <laughs> Can you tell us about your martial arts background? Um, I started martial arts sort of unintentionally, so to say. My friend, I was living in Germany at the time where I grew up, and my friend uh, had this great idea to do Kung Fu, and she asked me to find a place that teaches Kung Fu. So I did. She never showed up to the trial lesson, but I did. Uh, I, I got caught up into it right away. It was just something I felt it was like what I wanted to do and needed to do. So since then I've been doing for about 15 years, uh, I've been doing different styles in the different countries that I lived in. What is your favorite part about martial arts? I think it's the sort of the direction of focus mm -hmm. and it's one of those activities that allows you to be really present mm -hmm. and when you practice you don't think about anything else other than what's at hand um and i think it can be really applied to different the lessons of martial arts can be applied to to lessons in life it's it's a, it's a life practice that's why i like it what do you think makes a great film either short or feature length or both I personally think it has to do with whatever connection the viewer draws to the character or the story and that that, that can connect to people quite differently. Not everyone having the same response, but having a response and seeing maybe yourself and other people reflected in the story and, and maybe something that makes you find out more about yourself. How did you get into acting? Can you tell us about your first role? I started in theater. Um, it was a children's theater in Cologne where I grew up in, in my hometown. And my friend suggested it to me and I said, sure, I'll come along and try. And we, we were in this theater group for a couple of years. I was always playing um, boys because I guess I was really tall always. <laughs> so the princess girls were going to the petite girls and I was really tall. So I was playing um, I think my first role with uh, was in Momo, the play Momo, or like the story Momo, uh, and I was playing the master of the clock. So I was I was uh, an ethereal old man in my first role. That sounds fun. Yeah. <laughs> what roles do you want to try out in the future? I love expanding on my skill sets, whether that's languages, whether that's physicality, whether it's, or just feeling myself out in different, um, in different characters. So I'm really drawn to costumes at the moment and the power of a costume and how that helps you embody character. Uh, I'd love to do anime, um, obviously any kind of, superhero thing is mm -hmm. super fun as well as long as the as long as you can move in your costume mm -hmm. um yeah so and then but but it doesn't i i don't exclusively do martial arts stuff so for me it could also just be be let's say a profession that i've i'm personally interested and talented i think and and in, in very very in various disciplines so for me to, let's say, have the chance to play doctor, it's something I'm anyways interested in. So having, having a chance to explore something that's maybe somewhere inside of me, but that I'm not living out, that's, mm -hmm. that's why I'm fascinated and drawn to acting. You co-wrote The Cocktail Party with 
Jessica Sanders. Can you tell us about how this collaboration came about? Yeah, Jessica Sanders is a friend of mine. Um, we were introduced through a friend and she was seeing me. She was always curious about my martial arts training. So one day I took her with me. She's very athletic herself, actually. Um, and and she just saw it and was like, this is so cool and so unexpected. We didn't, I, I didn't think you could do this. And so she saw me train and uh, the idea came about, she's, she's really passionate about short films and she's done amazing short films and she actually embraces the form of short film. Um, so the idea came about years ago, maybe at this point, three years ago. Um, and it, we, we knew there were certain elements we wanted to incorporate. We wanted to incorporate martial arts. We wanted to incorporate people that she has worked with, that I have worked with. Um, so it kind of slowly built and it really was very organic. Um, getting together in coffee shops or for different sessions. And I, I guess we, it took us a month, a couple months to write. Can you talk us through the writing process for the cocktail party? Did you draw on any personal experiences while writing the script? Yeah, we did. So um, I used to work in catering and my, my character in the cocktail party, caters to cocktail party. I always personally really enjoyed the process because you get to kind of slip behind the scenes and see what el what's happening in somebody's house. And you get to observe the guests and the hosts from a different light and angle. So that was sort of that, that's where that character came from. And then um, I have hosted many parties in my house before and I remember somebody spilling red wine on my carpet and that's okay, that can happen, but that person didn't say anything. And I had to discover it days later when it was too late to get out of the carpet. And I just thought that was so rude. <laughs> and so, so from there on, um, it kind of started developing. Jessica had her own uh, personal experiences and um, she likes to work um, in her films. There's a lot of, um, it deals a lot with like different power dynamics. Mm -hmm. Um, which is, you know, why that comes into play. The woman played by um, Eugenia. Um, Eugenia is a, an Olympic ribbon dancer, so we wanted to bring in that element. So it kind of came about very organically between different facets that we both had to bring to the table. How is your experience filming the cocktail party? Can you tell us about the best part of filming the short film and the most challenging part about filming? Um, so this was my first experience uh, sort of taking charge on a project like this. Um, and I think the most gratifying experience is that the outcome, if you, you know, put yourself into it and put your, you know, your true passions into it, of course it will be a stronger result because of that. So. It's, that's just, I've always heard people say like, oh, you got to create your own things. And I, I was waiting until then to do it. I'm, I'm now doing more things on my own, but, um, and I think the most positive thing about the cocktail party was that Jessica and I had this idea and we were conveying it to people. And of course we needed financial support. And I think people got really excited very quickly about what we wanted to do and trusted us very quickly. And so we had the chance to work with some really wonderful executive producers who are not necessarily film people, just wanted to wanted us to create art. And that's what we did. So it was really nice to see how well that's received. The most challenging aspect was probably having to um, reschedule shooting. We were supposed to shoot last year in mid-March. LA hadn't locked down at that point, but it's, I think it was three days, official, officially three days before the lockdown. So we all actually showed up on set the Saturday morning oh. and it was raining and it was really strange energy and we kept going back and forth on whether we wanted to shoot and we ended up deciding to cancel the shoot. Mm -hmm. 
and at that point obviously we you know we had asked crew and cast to come to set so we basically burned a bunch of money and had to redo it in october how did that feel for you i was devastated i remember i was devastated but i also knew that i that jessica is the experienced filmmaker and that she was it was her call ultimately whether she felt like she wanted to do that and it felt devastating in the moment but i think it was the right things to do for sure definitely for safety reasons safety also there was sunshine that day we all knew what was happening was, i think it would have just not been the right energy mm -hmm. and you so know you remember those days so the first yeah. days so everything is empty and there's like you can't find anybody around and everyone's secluded in their own homes yeah no it was a strange time so I i'm i'm happy we postponed it and made it happen last year was it difficult with the blocking of the set um i wouldn't say so in the sense that we just had a really good team our dp was phenomenal and jessica and him they i think we had 72 setups in two days oh. um so uh, for me personally, it wasn't that difficult, but maybe for them it was, you know. Uh, although I remember we started on the Saturday morning with the end of the film, which now in retrospect, maybe we could have changed, but yeah. Can you tell us about your experience working with Jake Huang, the stunt coordinator? Can you tell us about how the action sequences were coordinated? Yeah, it was it was a collaborative effort. Um, he was very he wanted to hear what I wanted to do. You know, I know my skills best. We hadn't worked together. I'm a martial artist and I've done a couple of action things, but I'm not a stunt person, so to say. You know, stunt people can pick up a choreography and you know, with one rehearsal and they're ready to go. That's not me. So I needed more guidance, mm -hmm. but I think it was basically, I, I told him this is, I love this move, I love this kick, I love this combination, and he kind of made it work. Mm -hmm. um, and I think other than working with me, it was also really important for Jessica to work with him because she hadn't shot with, um, she sh hadn't shot action like this before. Mm -hmm. And communicating the choreography without making it violent, that was always the challenge. We didn't we didn't want to make a bloody a bloody martial arts film or action film we wanted to make a fun uplifting art, martial arts film but you still have to justify the action mm -hmm. so i think that was probably the most challenging part and that was really jessica and jake and and me working together trying to figure out how to sell the story and and sell the action what was your favorite part of the finished film mm. I mean, I love seeing people laugh, you know, or hearing people laugh. Um, I think my favorite part is that hopefully a lot of us can identify with the character mm -hmm. and have our own connections to it. Um, and that it's uplifting and fun to watch. I think we need more of that. What do you see as the future of film? The, f the future of film, mm -hmm. of this film. Of the film industry, maybe filmmaking or the medium itself. I mean, I have no doubt that culture in general, as well as you know, and film being part of it is always gonna happen and always gonna be a part that's essential to all of us. Of course, the actual industry is changing, has been changing so much, but I don't personally try to get too wrapped up in it. Mm -hmm. um, and if anything, I'm trying to see if, if, if it could be interesting to explore what future filmmaking could look like and using that as a tool, mm -hmm. you know, if it's AI or if it's, you know, virtual reality or, video games, video games has this having a huge uptick, of course. So all of these, for me personally, with my 
with what I like to do in acting, all of these facets are appealing to me and, uh, and interesting to discover. So I think it's, it, it's gonna, it's gonna keep, keep going, keep happening. And hopefully, hopefully it's gonna keep becoming more diverse in all its, you know, shapes and forms. I think it's an important movement that's happening. And, and I also hope that smaller stories find a way to be told as well. Definitely. Do you have any upcoming projects that you can tell us about? I'm working, um, I'm starting production next Monday, so in five days, um, on a feature film that I'm in and that I'm producing as well. Um, it's, it's a bit terrifying. It's an unconventional art film. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited to do that. And this is the first time that I'm doing both producing and acting together. Uh, so that's going to take up the rest of my year and Sounds probably a lot of next year. We'll see. Yeah. And now time for speed round. So you pick one film for each category. One film for each category. Okay. If someone wanted to get to know you, what film would you recommend? The Cocktail Party? <laughs> It it draws from a lot of personal experiences of like finding your voice and what was your favorite childhood film? I loved Alice in Wonderland. What is your current favorite film? Chang Chi. Mm -hmm. I loved it. Definitely my favorite Marvel movie. What is the next film you're going to watch? I need to watch a Gus Van Sant movie that two of the actors um, that I'm going to be working with uh, are in. It's called uh, Don't Worry, You Won't Go Far On Foot. Which cinematic universe would you like to live in? For example, the Grand Budapest Hotel, X-Men, MCU, Lord of the Rings. Can I just say anime? Mm -hmm, of course. Yeah. Any particular anime? Let's see. Let's see which one I may get to play. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for answering all the questions.